ิ้นเฉาสลามัตดาตังมาบูเฮสวัสดีครับนามัสเตเวลคัมกุตเตมอกันอัชโดยชลันนะครับ Ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for tuning into Asia Conference Day of the fifth Transport and Climate Change Week My name is Pan p i a s i n I will be your moderators for this fantastic day live from Hanoi Vietnam Our program covers topic of e-mobilities to decarbonization of transport in Asia, digitalization of for sustainable transport, and equal representation by men and women in this fast-growing sector. You will hear insight from country representative, namely China, India, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. The Transport and Climate Change Week is organized by GISAT. The German Development Cooperation Organization, on behalf of the German Federal Ministry for the Environment, various organizations in the region has supporting uh, the week with input on data management, resilient for transport system, as well as how transport and climate change protection are interlinked. Please check out the program in our website for the past and upcoming site events. For interactions with your speaker, you can use the chat function in our platform. Our session is virtual, and I have also the chance to welcome some of the speaker live in our studio. We are looking forward to this exciting day, packed with future-forward approaches to decarbonize transport in Asia and enriching our daily life with sustainable solution for mobilities. Without further ado. I have the honor to introduce to you our first welcoming remarks. Please welcome Mr. Oliver k r e a t u r e s the State Secretary of German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action. We will show his video presentation, and please enjoy the show. Participants, minister representatives, colleagues, welcome to the fifth Transport and Climate Change Week. Building on the success from the last year. This year's Transport and Climate Change Week will be once again held as a hybrid conference, as we are still going through the global pandemic. Nevertheless, the TCCW provides an excellent opportunity, and it's a well-established platform to exchange and jointly work on the providing solutions for transforming the transport sector. In 40%. Of countries worldwide, transport is a sector with the highest energy consumption, and in most of the remaining countries, it is the second largest. Decarbonizing the tra transport sector is therefore crucial for achieving international climate targets. With recent events, we are facing a double urgency in the face of Russia's attack on Ukraine. On the one hand. There's a climate crisis. On the other hand, Russia's invasion shows how important it is to exit from fossil fuels and consistently press ahead with the expansion of renewables. Germany is currently working quickly to reduce its dependence on Russian's energy, especially coal and oil. Just four weeks ago, the federal cabinet adopted a so-called Easter package. It is the largest energy policy revision for decades, and it is creating the conditions for boosting Germany's energy security and energy sovereignty. At the same time, it laws the foundations for Germany to become climate neutral. Germany has pledged to become climate neutral by 2045. The Climate Change Act. Is at the core of Germany climate policy. Most importantly, it fixes sector targets for the necessary emission reductions and defined an action mechanism to bring all sector on track. The new coalition treaty includes important measures and decision and how to reach these targets in the transport sector, especially electric mobility. Is an important element of transforming the transport sector and making it fit for the future. 
Electrifying transport by far holds the largest potential to both reduce, reducing energy demand and increasing the use of renewable and local energy sources. We have, for example, set a goal of 50 million fully electric passenger cars in Germany by 2030, which will support a massive rollout of charging infrastructure. We will believe that international collaboration is of a major importance here because vehicle markets have become ever more global, which is equally true for buses and trucks. Germany is also supporting the EU Fit for 55 target of zero CO2 from 2035 for new vehicle sales. Of course, decarbonizing sectors with electrification is limited is just as important. Aviation and shipping, for example, are challenges which also be addressed by supporting synthetic fuels based on green hydrogen. I am convinced that we need multilateral actions to achieve the Paris Agreement. Therefore, I think we need to enhance partnerships between governments to discuss the decarbonization challenge. Sharing experience and mutual learning has become more important than ever and I and my colleagues are curious to learn from your projects and your countries. Following the national elections, the Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Protection is now the lead ministry for the Climate Initiative. However, the Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety and Consumer Protections, as well as the Federal Foreign Office will accompany existing the new IKI projects in their respective areas of responsibility. The IKI continues to be an instrument of international climate cooperation that now serves several ministries. I wish you lively and fruitful discussions and new impulses for your work. Thank you. What you have heard is the welcoming remarks from Mr. Oliver Creatures in the cab. Our next welcoming remarks will come from Mr. Le Ang Duan, the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Transport Vietnam. In the cab. We will play another uh, video presentation, so please sit back and enjoy. Mr. Oliver Grisher, State Secretary at the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action. Ms. Regina Ecker, Country Director of German Development Cooperation, GIZ, in Vietnam. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Ministry of Transport of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, I would like to extend my greeting to distinguished guests and all participants attending the Asia Hub event held during the Transport and Climate Change uh, in 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, Transport and Climate Change Week, organized by German Development Cooperation, is an important international event aimed at uh, creating close links among countries, international organizations and experts in efforts to promote development of transport in the direction of low carbon emissions towards carbon neutrality and response to climate change. As one of the countries participating in the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, in 2020 Vietnam completed its updated nationally determined contributions and was one of the 20 countries uh, to submit this report promptly to UNFCCC Secretariat, especially at the COP26 conference, the Prime Minister of Vietnam committed with international cooperation and support of Vietnam will achieve the net zero emissions by 2050. Ladies and gentlemen, the Ministry of Transport of Vietnam highly appreciates the topics shared in the Asia Hub event today on the development of electric vehicles and mobility non-motorized transport, digital transformation, financial instruments, and other related topics to promote the implementation and decarbonization of transport. I believe that 
lots of uh, good experience and practices from other countries initiatives on smart transport digital transformation low carbon technologies will be shared uh, through discussion and sessions today that will create favor favorable conditions for countries to participate research and apply towards development of sustainable and zero carbon transport system i hope that experts and international organizations participating in the event today will support and promote cooperation technology transfer and mobilize resources to create conditions for developing countries including vietnam for building a smart and low carbon transport system towards the net zero emissions finally i wish all of you good health and wish the asia hub event as well as the sport and climate change week a great success thank you Thank you very much, Kap. What you have heard is the delivery speech, Nakap, by the Vice Minister of Ministry of Transport, Nakap, Mr. Le Ang Tuan, Nakap. As you can see, uh, Vietnam and also Asia also put a lot of emphasis on the clean transport and clean mobility as well, Nakap. Last but not least, it is my pleasure to invite Ms. Regina Eckers, Nakap, our GSZ Vietnam Country Directors, to join me on the stage to give her welcoming remark, Kap. Mr. Eckers, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Pan. Dear Honorable Mr. Li Antoine, Vice Minister of the Ministry of Transport of Vietnam. Dear Honor Honorable Mr. Oliver Krischer, State Secretary at the German Federal Ministry of Economic Affairs and Climate Action. Dear Honorable Ministers and Representatives from China, India, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Dear distinguished experts and transport enthusiasts, it is an honor for us as GIZ Vietnam to host the Asia Hub of the Fifth Transport and Climate Change Week, in which we are all moving forward to decarbonize transport together. To start, Please let me remind us of the importance and urgency of this. As Antonio Gutierrez, UN Secretary General, said at the launch of the IPCC Working Group 3 report earlier this year, every voice can make a, differ a difference and every second counts. Since 2010, Transport emissions have grown faster than in any other end-use sector, and transport currently accounts for about 23% of global energy-related carbon dioxide emissions. 70% of those emissions come from road transport. So emissions from transport are also growing more rapidly in dynamic development regions uh, such as Asia and projects and see emissions rising here. So what to do? Decarbonizing the transport sector is not just a question of technology, but requires a just transition that ensures social equity. Because transport is not only about emissions, sustainable development, gender equality, economic opportunities are all closely related and dependent on transport. To be successful, we need to involve all stakeholders in strategy development and implementation, public and non-public actors, private sector and NGOs, to jointly develop solutions. Since its start in 2017, the Transport and Climate Change Week has established itself as a very successful format that enables dialogue, exchange and cooperation. As the Asia region is outstanding regarding commitments for decarbonized and sustainable transport, 21 countries, including Vietnam, have signed the IG Declaration on Making Transport in Asia Sustainable which includes a decarbonization, decarbonization goal in line with path, pathways towards full decarbonization in 2050. By now, a total of 13 countries in Asia have set themselves zero carbon, net zero carbon targets by mid-century. 
So, altogether, 94% of Asia's transport sector emissions are covered by tar targets, which is a great common goal and vision. <laughs> Still, how to achieve this goal uh, remains a matter of debate and enthusiasm and, uh, and hard work as well as more assessments and reflection, creativity and innovation are still needed. This year's Asia Hub program with 11 sessions, experts clinics and country spotlights from China, Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand and Vietnam reflects the diversity and the urgency to transform transport in A Asia. With the Asia Hub here in Hanoi, we highlight the specific regional front runners and challenges, such as, firstly, electric mobility with a forecast of 59 million of two and three wheelers and 8.9 million four wheel vehicles by 2025 in this region, according to the IEA. Secondly, digitalization for sustainable transport, and thirdly, promoting regional women networks to push for more representation in this field and this region. So, this said, I would like to explicitly thank the Vietnamese Minister for Transport for supporting and co-hosting this regional hub for showcasing the decarbonization of transport in Asia. Vietnam's net zero emission target by 2050, announced by its Prime Minister at the COP26 in Glasgow, paves the way for decarbonizing transport and sustainable mobility in Vietnam in short, mid and long term. As she has said, we have the honor to cooperate with Vietnam's government in achieving this goal. We built on a decade-long cooperation between Germany and Vietnam, thanks to the funds allocated by several German ministries, such as the Federal Ministry for Environment, Nature Conservation, Nuclear Safety and Consumer Protection, the Federal Ministry for Eco of Economic Affairs and Climate Action, and the Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. We started our cooperation in the sector already in 1997 with the Sustainable Transport Project on Vietnam Railways that time. In the past decade, GIZ Vietnam has implemented several projects on transport, climate change, and on sustainable mobility. For example, the regional project NDC Transport Initiative for Asia. Currently, we assist in exploring the pathways and policies to achieve a zero carbon future for Vietnam's transport sector. On behalf of GIZ Vietnam, I would like to reiterate our strong commitment to work with the Ministry of Transport in Vietnam in the spirit of cooperation and partnership to successfully implement the decarbonization of transport. Ladies and gentlemen, before ending, please let me express my thanks to the organizers, the moderator, and of course all participants of today's event, which are which great success in moving us forward to decarbonize transport together. Let us take our responsibility to help shape a sustainable future of health, prosperity, and happiness for ourselves, for our children, for our grandchildren, and for many more generations to come. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kap. What you just heard is the, deliver, the, the welcoming remarks Kap, from Ms. Aker, Kap, uh, the Viet GIZ Vietnam country directors. Kap. So well, she addressed on many topics that we will also include in the session today. Kap, for example, on gender equalities, on uh, digitalizations. Kap, we are heading towards the same uh, goal of clean mobilities, and uh, we uh, also face the same challenge. And for today, perhaps we can learn from each other as well.